Hi, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, November the 27th. Well, work continues in Washington on tax legislation. Will the Senate be able to pass a bill or not? They're working hard at it on the Republican side. However, they won't be helped by the Congressional Budget Office report that was released yesterday. It shows, according to the Washington Post, that over time, taxes will increase for people making less than $75,000 a year and decrease, increase, excuse me, decrease for everybody else with particularly large benefits for people on the top end of the income scale. Also, this tax legislation in the Senate will increase the deficit by some $1.4 trillion. A lot of the cost will be to poor people will be in the end of support for health insurance coverage. Not a good bill for poor people, but that's not the point. Over the weekend, I should catch up. It's not going to be news to anybody watching this, but uh, the football coach at the University of Arkansas, Brett Bielema, was fired shortly after the game Friday with Missouri and a heartbreaking loss for the Razorbacks in the end of a 4-8 and eight season for Bielema. Everybody knew he was going to be fired at the end of the season. The acting uh, athletic director, Julie Cromer, uh, uh, Peoples, excuse me, had, had a blank there, did the job. Uh, she got a lot of criticism for firing him immediately after the game by pulling him aside into an office. I'm not sure there was a better way to do it. Bielema himself handled the job with uh, great class. He took it well and didn't speak ill of anyone. He seems like a nice guy, but he just wasn't a very good coach for the Razorbacks, so he's gone. His uh, payoff, the final terms of that are not yet known. They're also looking for an athletic director. I think it's safe to say after the criticism that Julie Cromer Peoples endured over the weekend that she's not likely to be considered for the full-time job by Chancellor Joseph uh, Steinmetz, but perhaps perhaps something else will happen. We shall see. Elsewhere, uh, news today on, on the uh, entertainment scene in April. There'll be another Spring Fest. This is a free family event that was modeled after the original Riverfest Festival that grew into Big Music Festival. You know, Riverfest was canceled after this year's performance because the acts are just too expensive. But for Spring Fest, something for the families will con continue in the first weekend in April. Well, speaking of taxes, uh, the state is looking at tax so-called reform as well. What they mean, they want to find a way to cut taxes, particularly for rich people and particularly for corporations. The Legislative Tax Reform Task Force is meeting in Little Rock next week, and it just wouldn't do for them to pay for their own meals. A message went out to the state's lobbyists today that they're looking for sponsors, so-called, to pay for a free dinner and a free lunch for members of the Legislative Task Force next week. You thought an ethics amendment ended free wine and dining? Well, no, it didn't. The legislators figured out a way to write in some loopholes, and this is just one of them. Wouldn't do if you got a corporate lobbyist handy looking for a tax cut and willing to encourage some good feeling among legislators to like to let them pick up the check. So they'll do it next week. It'll be a check for 30 or so people, apparently. What else have we got today? Well, let's see. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm having a hard time reading my hand. Oh, lots of gun news. Black Friday, big day for gun purchases. A record single day gun check purchase. Apparently everybody's going to celebrate Christmas by buying firearms for their loved ones. Some gun news at the U.S. Supreme Court today. The Supreme Court today let stand laws that in Florida ban open carry of firearms and in Maryland ban sale of assault weapons. These are things that gun nuts in Arkansas think are their rights by the Second Amendment. The Supreme Court said today that that's not the case. The uh, State Parole Board continues to consider cases of people sentenced to life without parole when they were younger than 18 years old, thanks to a U.S. Supreme Court decision that said that they should get another look at their sentencing. Parole was granted last week to two people uh, <clears throat> sentenced on murder charges, Laura Berry in Miller County and Dustin Vickers in Pulaski County. Berry had served 32 years, Vickers 25 years. They won't be paroled yet until their plans are in place, but they seem to be heading for freedom after a long time in prison. Also, uh, <clears throat> Jesse Miss Kelly, another famous former criminal defendant, one of the West Memphis Three, was arrested over the weekend in Crittenden County. No, not for a crime. He was arrested for driving without a license, driving without insurance, and having a headlight out if there ever was anybody that seemed likely to fall into a situation where he was lacking some of the necessities, it would be Jesse Miss Kelly. And finally, uh, a good word for Republican, G. Thomas Isley, uh, a federal court judge in Little Rock for 41 years, died at 94 over the weekend. He was a great one. He was a Republican. He owed his appointment to Winthrop Rockefeller. He was a Rockefeller-style Republican. He did any number of uh, important decisions, particularly on the environment, particularly on sentencing, particularly on the death penalty. He was a conservative. He was appointed by Nixon and was an admirer of Richard Nixon, but he wasn't afraid to do things that were right when, when the time called for it. We need more people like Tom Isley. I'm afraid that the current slate of appointees don't, don't live up to his standard. That's it for me today. I'm resisting. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.